In this episode, I'm going to touch very lightly on Spiral Dynamics and reference these two books that were co-authored by Don Edward Beck. What is Spiral Dynamics? Well, Spiral Dynamics is a systems thinking model that really helps explain the world. Don Edward Beck uh, was friendly uh, and connected with Clara Graves, who is the gentleman who came up with the Spiral Dynamics sort of theory or process, and he was actually friendly with Maslow, who had his hierarchy of needs. So you'll actually see a little bit of cross-pollination from sort of the ideas of uh, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs into spiral dynamics, which I personally think on the outset, spiral dynamics is like Maslow's hierarchy of needs on steroids. It really takes it a lot deeper, but we'll get to that as I explain the actual model. First of all, obviously the books are written by Don Edward Beck and the main one here from the 90s was also written along with Christopher C. Cohen. Uh, the sec this Spiral Dynamics, and Spiral Dynamics and Action one, which recently came out in, I think, 2017, 18, uh, was co-authored by uh, a lot of people uh, that I'm not going to get into. But obviously, Don Beck is the main featured person on the book or the, the leader of Spiral Dynamics currently in the world. Clara Graves invented it. Also, in this video, I do want to give a shout out to another massive YouTuber, uh, Leo from Actualize.org. It's actually his channel and his videos that got me into reading these books on Spiral Dynamics and I've been pretty much blown away by the content in the books and I'm continuously blown away by the content on Leo's channel. So go check it out. It's Actualize.org. Fantastic resource. And I just wanted to give that a shout out. So all this information is coming from these people and that's where we're going to really begin. So, spiral dynamics. I'm going to throw up an image now on the screen. And this image is basically going to show you here the spiral that was invented by Claire Graves. And then really taken on by Professor Don Beck and others throughout the last, you know, 50 to 100 years. Well, yeah, 50 to 100 years. Okay, so if we look at that, down at the bottom we have survival, which is beige, then we have security, which is purple, we have energy and power, which is red, order, which is blue, success, which is orange, community, which is green, synergy, which is yellow, and holistic life, which is turquoise. So you're thinking, what the hell is this? And I'm, I'm going to quickly try to give a really brief overview of Spiral Dynamics. It's going to be very hard for me to do that. Uh, you could spend hours talking about the subject, but... I'm really lightly going to touch on it and then I might actually do or I will do follow-up videos on a couple of the key ones. Just to let you know that yellow and turquoise are what they call second tier. There's very few people in the world that are actually at that level. We're, we're probably saying less than 1% or of less of 0.01% in the turquoise and maybe we have 1% at the world at yellow. But there is some yellow thinking around the world but we'll get into that later. The next parts all the way from beige to purple red blue orange and green we have examples that we can point to in society or point to at different periods in our own human history i'm going to try to spend a little bit of time on it here with up on the screen just going through things first of all let's just go through the colors very quickly beige at the bottom is right at the bottom it is you are just looking for food water shelter sex only out for yourself. Purple is tribal. It's a we. You've got small villages, indigenous tribes, Amazonian people, that kind of thing. Very uh, mystical, uh, but it's still a tribal in a sense. Then we move to red, which is a I one again. It's sort of your individual, back to individual, individualistic type. And, and that's very sort of Roman Empire, uh, big leaders, you know, almost like you could say Hitler was on the edge of red. Uh, he, you know, would... would use those kind of like kill or be killed kind of mentality you would call terrorists uh, would be in the red category uh, street thugs drug dealers people who you know it's about uh, making sure you're dominant and, and, and killing people to survive or, or doing bad things to survive you don't really care about other people you don't really have any remorse you're just about as long as you survive and you're successful then we move into order and blue this is where a lot of the world is, very ideological, uh, very religious. You'd find evangelical Christians in here and, and Muslims, Islam in here. And unfortunately, it's an us versus them. Even though it's a we category and it's back to group thinking, it's an us versus them. So you can have, a, 
an evangelical Christian. They're very community based. They love everybody else who they're with, but they will hate Muslims and this, or, or, or Islamic State. And you'll get that of ISIS. You'll get that of other Islamic groups. They will obviously like who they like, but they'll hate everybody else. So while there is a community sense in order uh, in blue, unfortunately, it's us versus them. Then we move to success and orange. And again, this is back to individualistic. So you'll notice we go from I to we to I to we to I to we as you go up the uh, the, the spiral. And as you move up it, you'll you'll go from a sort of a we community to more of an I self-driven one. And success, orange, it's entrepreneurial. It's where a, a lot a large part of America, Europe, the world is. Uh, while the world still has a lot of people in blue, there is that entrepreneurial uh, drive and a lot of governments, corporate, uh, you know, success or unsuccess is the way you look at the way the corporate organizations can destroy the world. And then we also look at Wall Street would be a really good example of orange. Then we move to green community. Again, this is back to we, but it's a little more holistic. Uh, a lot of liberals would be in here. Uh, Canada as a country would probably be in here. A lot of Scandinavian countries would be in here. So while it's we, um, it's uh, still got its limitations because with green, because it's not second tier, and I'll talk about second tier in a second because yellow and turquoise are second tier. Green has its limitations because it's similar to blue in the sense that people fall into the trap of us versus them. And you'll find this with ultra liberals. This is a trap that ultra liberals fall into. Even though green's a really good thing to be in, it's, it shows that you're moving up through the spiral. It does have traps. Like all colors on the spiral dynamics do have traps. But the one thing about green I do want to say is that you can end up being too liberal. Um, we know all about the SJWs, the social justice words out there in the world. If you're not liberal enough, they don't like you. So someone who's ultra liberal and ultra left can hit someone who's mid left just as much as they hit an all right person because they don't agree to whatever pronouns or gender uh, ideas or philosophies that the ultra left have or you haven't quite got that far yet so they will then attack you just as much as somebody who's alt right who's a million miles away and i think that's a major problem within north america and parts of europe right now where the green is so green or the liberals are so separated because they're falling into that trap of us versus them anyway too much talking about green there i just want to move on quickly onto second tier second tier is yellow unfortunately yellow would be gurus uh, really spiritual gurus yellow there's a little bit of yellow thinking in scandinavia uh with some of their sort of uh, government sort of ideas and, and and philosophies but yet yellow hasn't really been tested we're very green in a lot of parts of the world i, I don't know the percentage uh, off the top of my head but in the books they talked about you know scandinavia canada parts of the u.s the coasts uh leaning into green and there's a lot of great green ideas out there you would talk about current sort of political people within North America. Trudeau would kind of be green, even though he does have that sort of uh, conservative government kind of uh, environmental sort of pipelines that he's doing in Canada is coming through. You've got like uh, Warren and Sanders in America would be considered green uh, and liberal, but not super liberal. But yellow, we haven't really got any leaders around the world who are yellow and obviously turquoise, it, it, we're not quite there yet. That was a quick overview of the spiral dynamics diagram and going up through the colors. Now, not only can you go up through the colors, but you can also come down through the colors. So for instance, I would describe myself as green, tiny little bit of yellow thinking possibly, but mainly green, still a little bit of orange in me or quite a bit of orange because I'm you know, d trying to do my own business things. I'm still working in the corporate system, making money, uh, success. That's all still important to me. And there's probably a little bit of blue left in me coming from Northern Ireland where I grew up in a very ideolo ideological uh, religious country so I, I came up in that schooling system so I'm obviously influenced by that so being able to look at yourself and be able to see where you are on the spiral is a great idea because not only are you able to see the good things you can also start picking out your traps and that's something that I've definitely been able to use with spiral dynamics it's allowed me to actually look at organizations I work with or work within and see where they are within the spiral and then customize my communication to that and the reason why i want to go down that path is people who are blue are triggered by the people who are below them in the spiral and the people who are above them so this can really this spiral dynamics idea and reading the books has really helped me understand why we have such a culture war right now because if we go back 50 to 100 years the whole world was pretty much still blue. There's obviously still a little bit 
below in the reds and the purples as the uh, tribal sort of like Middle East or uh, you know indigenous tribes that are being untouched aren't around but mainly most of the country when you think about Europe and you think about the US and you think about China and, and other parts of Asia like Japan very blue because everywhere was very religious and then obviously as orange came through uh, the invention of sort of entrepreneurship two or three hundred years ago we go back to Adam Smith's book you know on capitalism and how over the last two or three hundred years we've evolved into this orange uh, society US in particular but now we have green and also we have yellow in parts of Scandinavia so we have people that are in blue 50 60 percent of the world is still in blue we have another 20 30 40 percent maybe doing the math not quite white right but in in orange and then we have maybe five ten percent of the world in green depending on how you're going to track those percentages and then we have one percent in yellow so 50 to 100 years ago there wasn't that much of a culture war there was just religious war because everybody was blue and it was us versus them or ideological war us versus them but now we have so many more layers of com complexity because we have many different parts of the world at many different levels and we even have a country like united states that has very large um, uh, parts of the united states are in blue very ideological very religiously based very sort of it's for america but yet on the coast we have a lot of green people and even some yellow people influencing uh, political decisions, influencing culture, uh, influencing how, how people are thinking, you know, pushing forward the LGBTQ community, pushing forward um, you know plans for government. And obviously that's creating a major culture clash because the, or the blue people don't want it, the orange people don't want it, but the green people want it. And they're all arguing because they don't know they're at different levels of the spiral. I mentioned there quickly about the fact that you can also go up and down the spiral. For instance, uh, touching on that, which I don't think I did, I'm obviously more green orange, but if anything happened in my life where I was all of a sudden uh, in a very desperate situation, I might lean and become more orange. If I lost money or lost my job and I didn't have as much money coming in, I might go and start. Uh, working in sales again and that might make me m a lot more orange where I'm being very competitive and stepping over, over other people to make money so I know even even though I think I'm evolving up through the spiral myself mostly green I hope from my videos and my channel I hope I sort of talk that way um, maybe a little bit yellow in there but mostly green and orange probably some people would argue orange because personal development industry is very much in that orange sector about getting better uh, and, and pulling yourself up by the bootstraps. However, as I've just said there, if anything happened in my life, I would probably lean more into orange than green because if I had to make money, I'd be leaning on those skills that I had about, uh, working in commission sales, uh, working as a salesperson for a long period of my life. If I had to go back to that kind of life to making money to survive, where currently I work in a corporate environment and it's more about ideas, it's more about project management and implementing things and carrying through projects through different phases, which is a different mindset and you need a different set of skills than the sort of the orange let's just make money and I'm going to make money for myself because I, I just need to be better in my life kind of thinking. And that's where I've evolved up through the spiral myself or I can see it. So anyway, I don't want this video to go on too long. I think I already have gone on a bit too much, but as again, this is a subject you could talk about for hours and hours and hours and hours. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually focus in on three of the main sex sectors. So I think the three main sectors that I actually live in, which is blue, orange and green. I think those are the three sectors that the world is revolving around currently and I think the three sectors that have really touched me in my life when it comes to spiral dynamics. And I'm going to do a separate video on each of them. I also just wanted to put one little quick caveat. There is no color in spiral dynamics that's better than another one. Just because you're green doesn't mean you're better than blue. Just because you're turquoise doesn't mean you're better than beige. You're, that's just where you're at. Everybody is 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 equal in a sense within the spiral and everybody can travel up it or down it depending on their life circumstances. So it's very important to remove any kind of prejudice that you think, oh, just because you mainly present as green with your thinking that you're better than somebody who is orange or blue. And that's the social justice warrior battles and the culture battles that are currently going on in the world. Anyway, that my dog's starting to bark in the background, so I'm gonna wrap this video up. Anyway, thanks very much for watching all the way through this part. I uh, hope you look, you're look, hope you're gonna check out my more, more my, my other videos my dog's barking again 
Thanks very much for watching all the way through to this part. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button if you want to follow along and get lots more content like this. I will be posting, again, more videos about spiral dynamics in the future. Hope to see you next time. Make it a good one.